Good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's edition of Ask Leah. A couple of minutes late tonight and Leah, as some of you won't have seen me before, those of you who live in Willow Grove would have seen me like this, but for a lot of my clients, you wouldn't have. Why am I sitting in front of my computer tonight with not a skerrick of makeup? my hoodie on and my hair undone. It is not a deliberate ploy, let me tell you. To be honest, two minutes ago, I was tapping away at my computer, printing out pages and pages of documents, uh, preparing for my networking workshop tomorrow night. I've got a massive day tomorrow. I'm running a five hour strategy session. Hello, Rachel. Running a five hour strategy session tomorrow for an aged care facility, um, preparing their strategy for the next three years. Hi, Tracy. And then I've got the networking workshop tomorrow night, which has just sold out, which is very exciting. But I've been busy today uh, working my butt off around the children coming home from school and I lost track of the time. So my plans to actually get myself as I would present for my brand, you know, face done, hair done, in one of my gorgeous wrap dresses for Ask Leah tonight kind of went out the window. So I did, I contemplated not jumping on. I contemplated uh, putting a post up and saying, you know, due to unforeseen circumstances, <laughs> Ask Leah's not going ahead tonight. But then I thought, you know what, bugger it. This is me. This is me authentically. Yes, I am that person behind my brand who, you know, is very professional, but I work from home a lot of the time. I work around my kids. I'm a busy mum. And in the end, I just thought, you know what, this is me sometimes as well. So I would jump on because you watch for my advice, not for my clothing and my hairstyle and my makeup. I really hope. I did, though, then think a couple of minutes ago, how can I work this uh, look tonight into a lesson? And I want to share with you one of the things I teach in my effective communication workshop before I go into some of the questions that have come through. Now, in my effective communication workshop, I talk about um, nonverbal communication skills. And one of the things I talk about is how the way you present communicates and conveys a message, including the way you dress. Now, obviously, I've explained the circumstances tonight. Hopefully, you go easy on me. However, the example I use in my workshops is the importance of matching what we wear to the impression we're trying to communicate. So when I present my workshops, essentially what my brand is in terms of my appearance is one of those gorgeous by Samantha wrap dresses. And they hit a really good balance for me in terms of how I want to project to my clients. I want to project as professional, um, you know, I want to look nice and professional, but I don't want to look over the top. So I'm not turning up in a power suit with my hair slicked back with bobby pins everywhere, uh, super spiky stilettos aside from my knees being shot and that not being an option. I'm not presenting that way when I deliver a workshop. Why? Because my workshops are based around connection, connecting with people, relating with people so that they listen to my content and go, you know what, I could do that too. Now, even when I present to big corporates that are very formal, I will still go with a wrap dress because one, it's super comfortable, it looks nice, but it still is relatable. I'm not looking too severe and strict. Now, if I wore a power suit, to a presentation with tradies or, you know, guys out at one of the power stations that just wouldn't connect. They wouldn't be able to relate to me. So I don't do that. By the same token, I would not turn up to run a, any of my workshops in my workout gear or the clothes that I'm in right now. For those who have just joined us, we've just established that I got caught out tonight being Wednesday night instead of Thursday night for Ask Leah. I was preparing for tomorrow night's workshop, looked at the time, went, ah, what will I do? Will I do it with my hair dodgy and my hoodie on or will I not? And I decided, bugger it, we're all in. 
Okay, so the reason I wouldn't turn up like this or in my workout gear to a workshop is because people would judge my professionalism and what I had to say based on what I was wearing. Now, some people in the audience, including a lovely woman at yesterday's workshop, will say, no, Leah, we wouldn't judge you. That's not what we're like. And that's lovely and we all like to think that we wouldn't, but we do. Now, here's the thing. If I was there as a professional to run a workshop to teach you skills around communication, me in my workout gear does not match the message I'm trying to convey. So I could deliver exactly the same workshop, but from the start, people would be like, mm, does she really know what she's talking about? Mm, how professional is she? Should we really take what she's saying to heart? So I'd be undermining myself. So something to consider, does what you're wearing match the impression you're trying to get? It's not about being in designer suits or labels. It's just remembering that you are always communicating a message whether you open your mouth or not. Hopefully the message I'm communicating tonight is that I'm like you and I'm a busy mum and sometimes we get caught out. Okay, let's get into it. I have had a couple of questions come through today. The first one is a really tricky one that I hope I can give some great advice to. It's from someone who's going to VCAT soon, which is never fun. Um, this person's going to VCAT to present a case uh, over a dispute um, with a business. And the business person who is going against this, this woman at the case is quite an aggressive, overbearing person. And the woman has contacted me saying, look, I know he's going to try to intimidate me. I know that's going to be his game plan. And I know that I'm in the right and I've got all my materials ready and I've got all my notes and my stat decks and everything I need, but I'm worried that his bully boy tactics are going to throw me off my game and I'm going to be a nervous mess. How can I stand up to him? How can I calm myself in this situation? Okay. Firstly, I'm really sorry you're in this situation to start with, okay? And secondly, it is great that you understand that this is his game plan. People who behave in this manner, people who, you know, come in and go aggressive and try to intimidate you, that's exactly what they're trying to do, particularly if, as you say, you really believe you are in the right, you believe you've got all the material to support it, then perhaps the only tactic this guy's going to have is to come in and try to throw you off your game so you can't present the strong case you have. Understanding that that's what he's going to try to do will help you to respond better because you are not going to give him the satisfaction. You know this is his game plan. No way. He doesn't get to win this one, okay? So what are you going to do? You said you've got all of these notes and stat decks and things like that. That is great. However, that has the potential to throw you out during the hearing. A question gets asked, and you're suddenly rifling through your paper, trying to find the right page or the right note or the right date. Here's what I'd recommend. You still have all that material? Absolutely. However, you consolidate your notes into a one pager as much as you can. That is your key messages. The key messages that you want to convey and you want to take the emotion out of it, okay? You want to nut it down to what's this really about? What point are you trying to get across? And as a lot of you have heard me talk about before, I always put my message into something I call the barbecue test. And the barbecue test is a strategy that I've used for years. I used it as a journalist. I used it in corporate communication roles. I use it particularly when I'm working with technical people, engineers, scientists and the like. Or when I've got you know, a lot of information about a topic and it's really complex. I'll have all that information in front of me and then I'll go, okay, how can I condense this down 
into the key messages. I'm going to imagine I'm standing next to a mate at a barbecue, perhaps we've got our beers in hand, and they say to me, hey, what's that case about or what's that project about? How would I answer them? Not with all the extra info around it, what is at its core? You want to get clear on that and dot point it and consolidate it into some prompting statements on a one pager so that you are really clear about what your messaging is. And ideally in the hearing, that is all you're going to look at. And maybe the bottom half of that page, hello to the newcomers, maybe the bottom part of that page will be your timeline with just some key dates and it might be, you know, made the purchase on this date contacted them about it on this date. But keep it really simple, clean, succinct. And that way, if you're asked a question or you feel intimidated and thrown off your game, you can glance down at that one pager and be back on track. Hopefully you don't have to rifle through your notes. That's one thing that will help. The second thing that will help is understanding that you will be nervous and that is absolutely normal and it is okay. Your body will be having a fight or flight reaction. It's our normal response to fear. It was wonderful back in the day when we were being chased by a saber-toothed tiger and we lived in caves. It's wonderful now when we are in genuine trouble, when we are in danger, that fight or flight mode kicks in, we get a spike of adrenaline, um, you know, cortisol, the stress hormone that gives us this surge of energy. That's what nerves are, a surge of energy, okay? It's not so helpful when we're trying to be strong in the face of someone who's endeavouring to intimidate us. But understand that that's what's happening. Your body is having a normal reaction to fear, okay? But you can manage this. You know that it's fight or flight. You know you're getting this surge of energy. So what are you going to do? You might exercise a bit that morning and that can be as simple as going for a walk. It might mean that on your way to the VCAT hearing, you are listening to music. It might be that you're practicing your key messages in the car on the way down so that you're getting used to speaking to them. And I tell you what, I practice all of my workshops in the car. People drive past me and I'm talking to myself all the time. Okay, so maybe practice those key messages on the way down, but then turn on some music, turn on some music that relaxes you. You know, take those deep breaths. People, you know, laugh at the whole deep breathing thing, but it works, okay? Right before the hearing, a couple of big deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth, or as I tell my children, smell the roses, blow out the candles. So blow like you're blowing into a straw, uh, you know, that really short and sharp through your mouth on the way out. Do that a couple of times. Make sure that you're not holding your notes in your hand because if you get nervous, your hands shake. Put them on the table. Have a drink with you to use as a pause. I always recommend, and again, those who have come to my workshops will laugh, I recommend you take a pop-top drink bottle with you. Why? Because yes, they will provide you with water, but they'll probably provide it um, to you in a glass. And what do we do when we get nervous with our glass of water? And as someone said at one of my interview skills workshops, when I was saying, you know, have a pop top because otherwise you get nervous and you shake and she put her hand up and said, yep, I was the person who spilled a whole glass of water over myself in a job interview and they had to one of the panel had to leave the room to go and get a tea towel to mop it up. So take a pop top with you, breathe, relax yourself as much as you can, understand that nerves are normal, have done your preparation, have consolidated it down and success is just presenting your case the best way you can and letting the chips fall where they may. This guy's aim is to try to intimidate and bully you Okay, that's his aim. You are not going to give him that satisfaction. I really do wish you the very best of luck. Second question that came in was a question about taking feedback. And it was a really good question, actually. It was about uh, when to take feedback and when not to take feedback because being able to accept and consider feedback is really important. But all feedback is not created equal. 
And Matt Church from Thought Leaders Business School has a great model for around feedback and, and what weight we give to it. And he suggests that it comes down to two questions that you need to ask yourself about any feedback that you're given. The first thing that you need to consider is whether you asked for the feedback. So is it solicited feedback? Did you ask for it? And the second question that you need to ask yourself and answer is, is the person qualified to give you that advice or feedback? Okay, so one, did you ask for it? Two, are they qualified to give that feedback? And this is how you then, uh, I suppose, screen the feedback against those two questions. If it is feedback that you asked for and they really are qualified to have an opinion, that is advice, okay? That is advice that we would act on because we asked someone who we trust because they know their stuff in this area for their opinion uh, or their feedback and so we would act on it, okay? If we asked for the feedback, but they're not qualified to really have an opinion on it or to, you know, to know what they're talking about on that issue, it's something that you might strategize on. It's data, really. Okay. It's data. It's information. Feedback, all feedback's information. So it's information. You might look at it. You sort the feedback, but they might not have been the right person to ask. Now, this is something we actually do a lot when we probably shouldn't. We, you know, because a lot of us are really insecure. So we ask people for feedback, but we ask the wrong people. So get more strategic in who you're asking for feedback in the first place. You know, if I'm asking for feedback on how I'm running my business, I would speak to other people who are in business people who maybe are doing things that I really admire. I wouldn't necessarily ask someone who's not in business about how to run a business. I might ask them for feedback about my business and how I'm tracking and what they think of my messaging, but I wouldn't ask them about how I actually run the business. Now, if the person is qualified to have an opinion, but you didn't ask for their opinion okay so they're qualified but you didn't ask in that case it is opinion and it is worth considering because it may be that someone who really knows their stuff has thought you know what I want to give this person feedback because I think I could help them or I think it's important um, you know it might be in a workplace where you get constructive feedback and it might be negative feedback. It might not be feedback you like and you didn't seek it, but you know what? This person is your boss or they know what they're talking about. So to dismiss it just because you don't like it is not a smart idea. You should consider it. If the person is unqualified to give you the feedback and you did not seek it, it's noise. It's noise, okay? You might smile and nod, but in one ear, out the other. It might be that, you know, a you've just had a baby, because I tell you what, if you ever want unsolicited feedback, just go have a kid. You might have had a baby and someone who doesn't have kids themselves or had a child 30 years ago or whatever it is, you know, you haven't asked for their feedback. They haven't been there in the situation that you're in. But, of course, they've got 20 different ideas about it. Everyone has an opinion when you have a baby. It might be in that case that you smile and nod and in one ear, out the other, okay? So not all feedback is created equal. Okay. The last question I had tonight was also about feedback and it was a follow on from uh, that second question, but it was about how to get better at receiving feedback. And I have spoken about this before, but I'll touch on it again to finish off if there are no other questions. Those who have just joined, you're going to be awfully confused about why I have no makeup on and am wearing what I'm wearing. Go back to the start. It'll all make sense. So how do we get better at receiving feedback? Because a lot of people I work with and 
mentor and coach get good at being able to have difficult conversations, one of the hardest things to learn is actually how to take feedback when it's difficult or constructive. The first thing you need to do is what Stephen Covey wrote about in Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and that is to listen to understand, not to respond. So someone's giving you feedback, usually what we do is we half listen to what we're saying and the rest of us goes, when they shut up, this is what I'm going to say in response. You need to really pull back from that and work on listening. Listening to understand where they're coming from. Now, the great thing about listening to feedback, especially when it's negative, two things. One, you might be able to understand where they're coming from and get the full picture. But two, if that feedback is based on incorrect information, say, you know, they on a different wavelength and they're accusing you of something that you didn't do, by you listening and hearing their accusation, oftentimes that gives you the information to be able to come back at them and say, well, actually, this is what happened. But if you don't give them the chance to say it, if you jump down their throat and say, no, I did not do that when they're 30 seconds in, then they're going to sit back and go, oh, here you go, getting all defensive. You won't even listen to me. So seek to understand before you respond. The next thing you want to do is get curious, even if you don't like the feedback. If someone says, Leah, you're a jerk, I'm curious. Okay, wow, that wasn't what I was intending. Can you tell me more about that? Can you give me an example uh, of what behaviour has led you to think that I'm a jerk because I'd really like to understand where you're coming from here. Again, this does a couple of things. It gives me the information I need because maybe I was oblivious to something I did that was perceived by others in a negative light. But if they're giving me examples, I'm making them own the statement. It is too easy these days to throw around accusations. Oh, you're too aggressive, you, you're no good at this or you don't do this, whatever it might be. It's really easy to say you, you, you. So when you say, oh, okay, geez, that's disappointing. Can you tell me more about that or can you give me an example? You're putting it back on them to own it. Okay, they can't just say, well, it's everything about you. Come on, you've got to give me something to work with. Give me some examples. And oftentimes that really makes the other person think because particularly if they're doing this whole bully boy or bully girl behaviour, their accusation is aimed at knocking the wind out of you and, and, you know, knocking your confidence. So by you remaining calm and being really curious and seeking information about the feedback, you show that you're reasonable and considered, but you're also trying to understand, get to the bottom of it, and you either get the information you need to go, okay, well, it wasn't my intention, but I can see where you were coming from and I'll change my behaviour, or actually let me set the record straight now that I have all of the facts that you've given me, okay? And at the end of receiving feedback, be grateful. Be grateful. And I'm not being facetious when I say that. You might not like their feedback. In fact, you may hate it. And absolutely be prepared to say you disagree. If you disagree, be prepared to stand up and say that. However, be grateful for the feedback. And what I mean by that is be grateful that the person had the courage and took the time to say that to your face because there is so much behind people's back talk that happens and it's not fun when you are the subject of that and we've all been there where someone's been talking behind our back. Okay, so if someone gives you feedback, even if you don't like it, be grateful they had the guts to say it to your face so that you can address it. Okay, that's it from me tonight. I hope you've enjoyed this very pared back version of Ask Leah. For those of you coming along to tomorrow night's networking workshop, my last public workshop of the year, it has sold out. We've got beautiful catering from the Willow Grove General Store. 
and some delicious wine, beer and cider and soft drink to enjoy. I can't wait. I'm going to go back to preparing for that now. Have a great evening, everyone, and send your questions through for Ask Leah next week back on Thursday nights. Have a great one.